Hi, my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. Today we are going to do a super quick, beginner friendly, it's like an introduction to yoga inspired exercise. So we're going to do some really basic yoga poses. I'll show you different modifications for each so that you can know what to do for your edge. And the thing that I want you to think about the most is everything should feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. All right. Yoga is supposed to feel good and you're supposed to, you know, like what you're doing. So if you don't like it, stop and go back to something you do like. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and get started on our hands and knees. This is called tabletop position. You want to make sure your hands are underneath your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. Draw your belly button to spine because a lot of times we like to hang out with our belly drooping down and our bottom sticking up in the air. So go ahead and draw that belly button in and puff up the space between the shoulder blades. And the next thing you want to think about is softening your elbows. Go ahead and look down at the ground in between and in front of those fingertips. So maybe like six six inches or so in front of your fingertips. That should have the crown of your head, the very top of your head, reaching for the wall in front of you. You're going to notice that this is an active pose. If you have those elbows slightly bent and you press down into the thumbs and the pointer fingers, that reduces some of the pressure in those joints, those wrist and elbow joints. And when you puff up that space between the shoulders, that activates all of the muscles that help support the shoulder girdle. Now we're going to plug those toes into the mat and we're going to just pick up the knees off of the mat. And the lower you go without touching, the more difficult it is. We're going to hold this for five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, straighten those knees and come to your very first downward facing dog. Downward facing dog, your hands are still shoulders width distance apart and your feet are hips width distance apart. You want to try to get your heels to the mat, but if they don't touch today, that's okay. Go ahead and sway side to side. Maybe you move your bending one knee and then the other moving your hips from side to side. Do something that makes this posture feel better as you warm up. We're going to do this for two more breaths. Now we're going to look between those hands and walk our feet forward. Here we are at the tops of the mat. Feet are about hips width distance apart. Knees are bent a whole, whole bunch. Go ahead and clasp opposite elbows. You're going to rest those chest, your chest right there on the thighs and sway side to side. Let your head go and relax. Now you're going to come to stillness, push down into those big toes, draw your belly button to spine and push your tailbone down as you roll yourself up. Coming into your very first mountain pose. This is called mountain pose or Tadasana. We're going to move through what's called a sun salutation or Surya Namaskar. Inhale, hands come up. Maybe your gaze goes up. Exhale with your belly in, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, pull the shoulders back. Exhale, plant your hands, walk, step, jump your feet back to high plank. Hold this plank here for just one inhale. Exhale, drop your knees down to the mat. Hug your elbows in as you come and bring your belly all the way down to the mat. And then push the tops of the feet into the mat, hands pressing into the mat, lift your chest up. Draw the belly button to spine as you lengthen through the tailbone here in this nice little cobra. And then go ahead, drop the forehead, plug those toes or the knees in, squeeze the elbows in, push down. Here we are in this plank on your knees or on your toes, and then go to downward facing dog. And breathe. One more. From here, we're going to look between those hands, walk, step, jump your feet forward. Keep those knees bent as much as they need to. Those feet can still stay hips width distance apart. We're going to bend the knees even more as we pull ourselves up. Bring the hands up overhead and then down to your side mountain pose. Now let's do a sun B. Surya Namaskar B. It starts in a chair pose. Try to bring your toes together, heels apart. If that feels wonky on the knees, you can leave your feet hips width distance apart. Lengthen through the tailbone, draw your belly button to spine, and keep your chest up. A lot of times what likes to happen is your bottom likes to go out and your ribs like to flare out. 
Now, that is not good. This actually hurts the low back over time. So keep the tailbone tilted down and keep the rib cage kind of going inward. You may not feel like you can sit down as low, but that's okay. You should feel your abdominal muscles working a little more. Hands are reaching up for the sky. Unless your heart rate is going up a little bit too much, then bring it down to your heart center. Belly stays in here. One more breath. On your exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Belly stays in. Exhale, plant those hands. Walk your feet back and drop your knees down to the mat. Now, if you've got a chaturanga without bringing your knees to the mat, that's okay. Go ahead and go for it. We're going to do a chaturanga on our knees. So that's a yoga push-up. Inhale here. Exhale. Lower your body halfway down. Try to get your rib cage to touch the inner parts of your elbows. Now push yourself to this upward facing dog. Maybe you can pull the tops of the thighs off of the mat with the, the tops of the feet pressing into the mat. And then go ahead, ground the knees, push your bottom up towards the air, grounding down through the toes, come to your downward facing dog. We're going to go ahead and plant that left heel down at the back of the mat. Bring that right foot forward. Your left toes are facing the front left corner of the mat. Your hips are facing forward. You're going to bend that right knee a whole bunch. Draw the belly button to spine. As you lift your torso up off of your legs, bring your hands up and overhead. Here we are, warrior one. We've got our chest reaching forward. Shoulders are square to the front of the mat. And our hips, if we had headlights on our hips, they're, they're shooting straight forward. That right knee is working towards 90 degrees, but if it's not there yet, that's okay. Your hands can be reaching up in the air, or they can be at your heart center, depending on how hard you're having to breathe. Remember, in yoga, we try to do ujjayi breathing. That's in through the nose and out through the nose. Belly stays in, even here. One more breath. Nice. Go ahead. Ground those hands down onto the mat. Bring the right foot back. Drop down to your knees. Elbows hug the body as you look slightly forward. Come to your chaturanga. And then upward facing dog. That's or a cobra, your choice. Rounding yourself over, downward facing dog. From here, we're going to ground the right heel down. Right toes are facing the front right corner of the mat. Left foot comes forward. We're going to bring that left knee to almost a 90 degree bend. Those right knee feet are facing forward into the outside of the corner of the mat. Right heel is down. Lift your chest up. Belly stays in. Hips try to square off to the front of the mat. Ribs try to square off to the front of the mat. Shoulders are also square to the front of the mat. Hands are reaching up overhead or at your heart center. That left knee eventually will be at a 90 degree angle. But if that's too much on the right hip flexor, because that's what's getting a good stretch right now, straighten that left leg ever so slightly. Now, if balance is an issue, open up your feet wider like on railroad tracks, and that should give you a little bit more space for that right hip flexor. It also helps you to have a little bit better balance. Your gaze is up towards your fingertips, or it can be down your nose. One more inhale here. Exhale, plant the hands down onto the mat. Move that left foot back. Move through your vinyasa. So this is that high plank. You can be on the knees if you'd like. Go over to low plank. Inhaling upward facing dog. Exhaling downward facing dog. Good breath here. Wiggle your knees if you need to. From here, we're going to look between those hands, walk, step, or jump your feet forward. See if you can do toes together, heels apart. Bend the knees a whole bunch. Come into your chair pose. Remember, belly stays in a whole bunch. Tailbone stays down. And try to think about lifting that pelvic floor, squeezing the pelvic floor. It's like you're practicing your kegels. One more breath here. And then hands to your side, mountain pose. Now we're going to move on a little bit, so let's go into your chair pose. Belly's in, knees together if you can. Remember, you can also bring your feet hips width distance apart and leave about hips width distance between your knees. The most important thing here is that you keep that tailbone down. That's going to keep the, belly the booty engaged and your belly button engaged. Let's bring your hands to your heart center here. One more inhale. And on the exhale, left elbow to the outside of that right knee. 
you can stay right here or you can work your thumbs towards your chest in this twist. One more breath. Inhale, let's come back to chair. And then exhale, standing up straight, mountain pose. Inhale here. Exhale. Next inhale, we're going to sit back into our chair. We have to do all things on both sides. Catch your breath. Draw the belly button in as you lengthen through the tailbone. Bring your hands to your heart center. Chest is proud here. Make sure you never twist without your belly being engaged. Inhale one more. Exhale, let right elbow to the outside of that left knee. You can have your hands out in front, or you can have your hands towards your chest, reaching the thumbs into your chest. Gaze is over the left shoulder if that's okay with your neck, or it's down at your toes. Try to keep your knees in line. One more breath. Nice, coming back into chair. And then mountain pose. Beautiful, let's stretch out the hamstrings now. Feet are about hips width distance apart, not mats width distance apart. Belly comes in and let's forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers and then pull yourself down. Elbows are out wide. I should see your biceps. If I had a camera watching you, I'd see your biceps working to help pull and lengthen along the backs of your legs and the back of your body. You should feel this in your back in your hamstring. It feels pretty delightful. Now let's think about consciously getting the shoulders away from the ears. So we're engaging the upper back as we pull everything down. One more. Nice. Now go ahead, let go of those big toes, grounding down your hands on top of the mat in front of your feet. Bend your knees a whole bunch as much as you need to. We're going to play with a little bit of balance here as you pick up that left foot, bring that left heel towards your bottom. Bend that right knee a little bit more. You'll feel your bottom working. If you want to juice this up, maybe you come to spider tip fingers. Maybe you take your hands off the mat. Yogi's choice. You can keep those hands planted on the mat. Who'd have thought such a small movement would be so hard, right? One more breath. Nice. We're going to shoot that left leg out and behind us. Spider tip fingers maybe on the mat in front of that right foot. Left leg is pushing into that imaginary wall behind us. Here we are in airplane pose. This is a very active pose. Your right leg should be talking to you. It's not quite straight, but it's also not super, super bent. Now we're going to ground down through those left toes. Bring that left knee down to the mat. Draw your belly button into your spine and then bring your hands to your right knee or right thigh and then push your torso up. This is called a crescent lunge. It's a modification of the crescent lunge. You should feel a whole bunch of stretching happening in the left hip flexor. If you want to juice this up ever so slightly, you can press into those big toes on the left foot, draw your belly button in, and then bring your left knee off of the mat. But if that's too much, hanging out here in crescent lunge, hands at your heart center or hands reaching up high, you can always leave this left knee down on the mat. Keep that belly button into your spine, and we're going to twist this out. Left hand is going to plant on the inside of that right foot. Right hand's going to reach up for the sky. Try to get that right shoulder to be on top of the left shoulder, and try to have your belly button to spine. Bend that right knee a whole bunch so you'll get a little bit more stretch into that left hip flexor, and the right butt cheek gets a slightly better burn. One more breath. Nice. Go ahead. Plant the right hand down. We're going to take both hands in front of the right foot. Come up off of the left knee if you're down there. We're going to transition through that grounded airplane. So hands pressing into the mat. Push off of that right foot. Left foot comes up off of the mat, pressing into the imaginary wall behind you. Maybe you bring your right hand behind you to see if your hips are square. One more breath here. And then ground down that left foot, bend into both knees a whole, whole bunch. We're going to transition through a chair pose, so draw your torso up. Belly's in, just a little bit of booty extra credit. And then forward fold. Straightening both knees for just a moment. Pull yourself down a little bit. And then on the inhale, open up those feet about hips width distance apart. Hands are in front of both of your feet. Maybe they're flat, maybe they're on spider tip fingers.
bending that left knee as much as you need to for that hamstring, and then you're going to pick the right foot up. Try to have the right heel to your right bottom cheek. This left leg is somewhere between straight and a chair pose, knowing that the deeper that you have this, the more difficult it is. If you want to, you can play with balance, bringing one or both hands off of the mat. Or you can keep both hands onto the mat. Draw that belly button to spine as we straighten the left leg ever so slightly, reaching the right leg out behind us. That right foot is pressing into the wall behind us. Maybe you come up onto spider tip fingers so you're having to use your balance more. Draw the belly in and check in with your hips to see if they're even. Good job. One more breath. You should feel this a whole bunch into that left glute and the left leg. Go ahead, ground that right, those right toes down, bring the right knee down. Nice stretch here for that right hip flexor. Left hand, then right hand come up to the knee, enjoying this grounded crescent lunge. Draw your belly button in. Nice. If you want, remember, you can plug the toes into the mat and then shoot energy out that right heel as you lift the right toes up coming into your crescent lunge with hands at your heart center or hands reaching up. Now remember, you don't have to do that. You can stay right down here on the mat with your right knee on the mat, pressing into that right hip flexor. It's a great stretch for the right side body as well as a strengthener for the left leg. Draw the belly button in as you ground that right hand down on the inside of the left foot reaching that left hand up towards the sky, left shoulder stacking on top of the right. You can gaze up towards those left fingers and left th unless that feels wonky on the neck, then look down at those right fingertips. Go ahead, bending that left knee a little bit more, really getting a nice stretch for those right psoas, right hip flexors. One more breath. And then we're going to go ahead, bring both hands down to the mat in front of that left foot. Ground down through those right toes to pick up the knees, and we're going to play with that grounded airplane. So inhale, tell yourself you can do this. Exhale, push yourself up. Right toes are pressing into the wall behind you. It's imaginary, so just make that right foot really, really active. Right glute is engaged. Right hamstring is engaged while the left leg is doing its work to help balance you. Draw the belly in. One more breath. Go ahead, ground that right foot beside left. Try to walk those toes together and then come down to a tiny little ball. Pretend you're trying to fit into the smallest space ever. Little ball squat, some people call. You're going to notice that your heels come up off the mat. You can leave your hands here on the mat or you can play with balance and give your knees a big hug. This is an active pose. It's stretching out that Achilles tendon and your feet while still working your glute muscles and even your ab muscles. One more breath. Nice. Go ahead. Bring your hands out in front, shifting your weight back, and see how controlled you can come to your bottom. Woo. Good job. Ground those feet into the mat about hips width distance apart. We're going to hold on to our knees as we relax our back back. Our back's back. That makes sense. So make about a 45 degree angle between your rib cage and chest and your thighs. You can hold on to your knees here or you can hold on to your, the backs of your thighs. If you really want to juice this up, you can let go of both and bring your hands out, palms facing slightly in and up. You don't want to let your hands dangle out too far to the side because that disengages different, that disengages the transverse abs. So kind of have them closer to the knees. I have mine about six, eight inches away from the knees. Pull the shoulders down and away from the back. And then try not to round in the upper back. So try to keep your chest proud. You're going to feel as you do that, your belly has to work a little bit more. If you want to juice this up, you can raise one foot or both feet off of the mat. We're just going to leave them here at a 90 degree angle for five, four, three, two, one. Grounding both feet down. Go ahead, pull yourself up. And now we're going to bring the feet together, the knees fa falling out to the side. If your knees don't come all the way down, that's okay. You can grab a blanket or a block and put them underneath the thighs. We're going to stretch out those hips that we kind of worked a little today. 
Try to open up your feet like a book. So we're trying to bring the soles of the feet to reach the sky. If you want, you can bring your hands to your inner thighs and rotate them down and back. So you're, you're thinking my, the palm of my hand is on my inner thighs and my fingers are trying to rotate my inner thighs backwards. One more. Good job. Okay, go ahead and bring those knees back together. We're going to slide the left foot underneath the right foot. We're going to bring that left knee down to the mat. We're going to cross the right foot on top of the left leg. Now we're going to take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee and the right hand to the mat behind your body, twisting this out, and maybe you look out of the right corner of your eye. All right, coming on out of this, we're going to pick up that right foot, take it off of the top of the, the left, unbending that left knee. We're going to bend the right knee, bring that right heel to the outside of the left hip, left heel to the outside of the right knee, right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Secret with all twists is to draw your belly button in before twisting. Now you can leave your elbow bent as you really apply pressure to the outside of that left thigh. Gaze over the left shoulder, or you can take your hands to your heart center and try to work those thumbs into your chest. You can do a whole bunch with this pose. One more. All right, come on out of this. We're going to go ahead and start to move towards our back here. So plant both feet onto the mat. We're going to do one really long descent from maybe a sit up if you can. So try to keep your back as straight as possible. Once it starts to round, you go all the way down to the mat. But while you can keep it straight, slowly pull yourself down towards the mat. As soon as you feel something round, go ahead and come all the way back down to the mat flat. Good job. Bend those knees a little bit more. Draw those heels up closer to your bottom. See if you can touch the heels with your fingertips. Hips and heels are in line, so your feet are about hips width distance apart, trying to be parallel to each other. Go ahead, push down into those heels, channel your inner Jane Fonda, squeeze the glutes, and lift. Here we are in a bridge pose. Pretend you have a block in between your knees, so try not to let your knees splay out. Bre really squeezing the knees together for five, four, three, two, and one. One more for extra credit. Nice. Come on down. We're going to do that one more time. Push down, lift up. And now if you want, you can play with bringing one foot up off the mat for five. Or you can cross the right foot over the left like a, a back bending pigeon. Three, two, one. Grounding that right leg down. And then picking up the left. Or you can just stay here in your bridge pose. Really squeeze the glutes. Go ahead, grounding that left foot down. Lift the hips one more, and then roll yourself all the way out of this. Bring the knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Let it feel pretty good. And then bring your arms out wide to a T. Drop your knees over towards the right as you gaze towards the left. Even here in this twist, you don't want to let the belly out. When the belly's engaged, the back gets to relax a little bit. So this might w be where you get a little bit of nice relaxation for your back. All right, belly in, pull those knees up. Squeeze them in to reset. And then let's go over, knees towards the left, gaze towards the right. If you're like me, it sounds a little bit like Rice Krispie Treats. This is my tight side. I can always feel it here. All right, bring those knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. And then go ahead and extend those legs out long. Hands out long over your head. Long body stretch. And then come into your final resting pose, your Shavasana. Usually people have their hands down by their sides, palms facing up. Let go ahead, flop the feet forward and back until they get comfy and you let everything go. You close your eyes, let your breath become slow and heavy and calming. 
you worked really hard today. That was an awesome introduction to making yoga be exercise, what we like to call HIT yoga in the Thrive Online and Thrive Yoga and Wellness community. It's a high intensity training using yoga inspired workouts to help bring about the what I like to call the original functional fitness. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun and maybe tried something new. And if you love the video, make sure you subscribe and you get into this community and you stay in the community. More things are being added every single day. Thanks a lot. I can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.